Okay, hopefully I'm down to two videos left in this series. This is this one and one more. Now, what we have is we're starting at 1 AD, and I have it written here. You know, I'm crossing things out, changing things, and then I'll remake copies of this and have it more legible. And in 1 AD, we start two events. From now on, we always keep two events. We remove all the leaders except for the winners. Um, and we added Tiberius, Varus, Vala, Germanicus, and Silas. And they're all for the red side. And I spent about three years here building up stuff and maneuvering. Now, in 1 AD, remember, red, Romans, there's no more civil war. There's 25 legions on the board and 25 auxiliaries. Red can have 15. Purple can have 10 of each. However, after 1 AD, where I have it all written down in my notes, there is uh, area legions that you can now recruit. The maximum legions strength goes at starting at 1 AD goes from 25 to 33. And both sides can recruit the area legions. First come, first serve. But as soon as you hit 33 legions, you have to stop. So, for example... We have, I want to say here, uh, it's at this camp. No, maybe it's, well, I forget where he was, but Purple recruited the Macedonian Legion. And it says where you, as long as you control Amphibious, he can recruit that Legion. Uh, Red has recruited five area legions, and it's the Danube area legions, and I think a Gallic Legion. Anyways, these are the leaders I have set up ready to continue our game. Now, I set up the Barbarians. These forces can be set up, just like the Gauls were the Helvetii tribe right here, at the beginning of the game. But they're not allowed to move unless, for example, this force cannot move until Roman units enter Britain anywhere. Dacia and the Germans cannot move. This is their starting setup per the uh, Germanicus scenario one. And I set up the Eagles marker according to the Germanic uh, scenario, Germania scenario two. And it's in my rules. Now another thing I liked was the Eagles marker. And again, it's just a fun thing to do. It represents uh, Armenius ambushing Varus at Tutaboro Wald in Germany and they destroyed three legions like and and lost like up to 20,000 uh, troops there and camp followers so and they captured the eagle so the eagle represents a pride of the legion and the barbarian players and the clients if they can keep this legion till the end of the game the marker the the eagles marker they're going to get 75 points added to them if the romans can take it from them i'm going to re award the romans 30 points so that's just a little fun thing and there's rules in the germanicus scenario two of how to move that and how to use it my pax romana scenario none of these forces are allowed to move until uh the Romans cross the Danube River, which is going to be this river right here, and it goes to here, or it enters the uh, Germania board, which is up here. So, as soon as the Romans move north of that river and enter Germania, these barbarian units can start moving. So, the other rules we have is... I want to make clear is the colonization you'll see colony sites let's see like this if it has a civish unit on it it means it's been colonized that means we traded a veteran or imperator legion and a supply unit and colonized it and you had to get a roll on a dice i think it was a one two or three it's like 50 percent chance and you're allowed to put a civis this is now a roman controlled city for the victory conditions and it's a roman controlled city for all intents and purposes 
except for recruiting. Now, there is a one exception. I can revert this back to a colony site, remove the civis, and put the veteran legion back on. Just a veteran legion, whether you used an imperator or not, doesn't matter. You can put a veteran legion back in that spot. Now, why you would do that, why would you go through eliminating a legion and a supply and then turn around and lose the colonies, lose the city and turn it back into a colony site? I don't know. Maybe in a case of the emergencies you do that. But otherwise, I haven't done that yet. It remains a city. It's a victory point. I can use it for my supply source. So you also see stuff like this. Now, this is a city that has a, num a letter on it. So that's T for Thrace. Over here, it'll be G for Gauls. When you see a Roman city on a lettered city, that means that the Romans converted that city to a Roman city. And again, that's done like the colonization, the same way. So, once the city is converted, it now becomes a controlled Roman city for all intents and purposes, and you can use this city as a Roman city. In other words, you can recruit from it normally, all kinds of stuff. So that's one of the benefits of turning the cities into a Roman city. Now, let me show you something else. This city right here. This is an Asian city. It still has an Asian troop on it. But you can you see there is a Roman civis on it. Just like this has a Roman civis, but we converted this to a Roman city. This one has not been converted to a Roman city. But it is Roman controlled. So you count it toward the Roman victory point as controlling a city. So it's... It's counted as a Roman controlled city for victory points, but other than that, you can't do anything else with it except have a civis unit on it. You can only recruit the Asian units from here until you convert it to a Roman city. So, but I think I'm leaving that one because I'm going to recruit Asian units from there, so I left one. You know, and I can still go and conquer all these other ones and turn them into Roman cities, but you know, I haven't had the time or the chance yet. Remember, there's civil wars, events going on. But anyways, that's one thing you'll see in this game like that. It's Roman controlled, but it's still an Asian city, and you can't use it as a Roman city. And I think that was all of the clarifications I wanted to make about what you see on Civis as far as civis units on top of cities. I guess the last one was an assimilation. If you see a civis unit on, let's say, Rattai, we can do things. You can either put a civis unit there. All that's telling you is that it's been assimilated. Simulated just means the barbarians cannot recruit from it anymore. They can't mobilize from it if the Romans move adjacent to it. Or we can just go on the board and put a marker on your side knowing that you assimilated it but you got to watch be careful of that because then you don't want to think that it's in your control because if you control a tribe then you're recruiting from it you know if you have a barbarian uh, leader so i just put a civis unit on it it doesn't mean it's a roman city it doesn't mean you get victory points for that it doesn't mean you can use it as a roman city it's not it just means it has been pacified and it's assimilated. So you might see more civis units or some other way I might point, use a marker that says these are assimilated. So other than that, we follow the same rules for the barbarian countries here as we do for Gaul. I'm not going to show you everything. You already know it. I'm going to run through it in the high speed that you see in the scenarios here because I'm going to work through it. Basically, you have from 1 AD to 68 AD because in 69... AD, we're going to start another civil war. And I thought it would be fun to add this in. We really don't have to. We can just keep playing this game out until we hit 200 AD. But I like to throw in historical events. I think it's fun. And I think people enjoy recreating history. So at this point, we're still recreating history because 
after 1 AD, we did start, the Romans did start invading Germania. They started the invasion of Britain. And so, and you know, at 117, uh, Trajan started conquering uh, 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 Dacia here. So all this is going to take place now. The Romans have nothing else to do. They have to cover events. They have to watch wars for Parthians. Basically, we're still going to try to take cities. Remember, that's the object of the game. The Romans at this point, are going to try to work together. Remember, they win the game collectively. They will beat the other two players if they can control 115 cities. Make sure they own, they control the cities. They don't have to own them or convert them, but control the cities in Gaul, Britain, and the uh, colony sites in Germany. And it looks like it would just be those two. Yeah, none of these are colony sites. These are just tribal centers. And control these two colony sites. If you can do that and control 115 cities, the Roman player wins the game. So this is going to be, I think, the first best chance the Romans are going to have in these 68 years to do that. The barbarians, the client player, they need to stop them from doing that. Now, when we hit 69 AD, we are going to play the scenario Year of the Four Emperors. And we're going to follow that scenario rule. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. We'll have to, uh, you know, fix some things and set some things up. But I, and I think I explained, I really didn't want to do that a lot in this game. And I don't think I have. I think we have flowed through this game pretty well. But I want to do this, the year of the four emperors. They have a scenario on it. I think it's fun. And it gives purple a chance to become emperor. Besides whatever event may happen. You know, he may get a chance through events, but... It'll go into another civil war, and the purple can get a chance to become emperor. So I think it's cool, and I think we'll do that. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and take the 22 turns, and I'm going to move fast, and I'm going to show you, you know, or I don't really have to show you, but I'm going to be trying to conquer the barbarian nations here and, and deal with any events that may arise. So I just want to say that, you know, as I'm moving, spelling military, spending military stratagems, like I'm out on military stratagems, you know that. You know how it's played. Just reminding, as I move this one up, uh, well, this one stayed. As I move this one up, I don't use a military stratagem, but he made it. But using a military stratagem here, and I still lost. Remember, I'm moving cross-country. There's no roads here. I still lost a unit. Uh, here I just moved ahead of the barbarian. The Barbarian uh, went to fight the Romans because here's my thinking. I have a huge force. I'm in supply two away from a friendly civish unit, so I don't worry about supply moving this huge force. I, Because he's a supreme chief, he's getting two stratagems every turn. So... I, might, I don't know if I'm going to have this huge force ever again. So I'm going to use that huge force and I'm going to attack the Romans right away. I think they're most vulnerable right away. But the Romans chose not to fight and that's why the siege is there. Oh, down here, I just moved next to the uh, tribal center of the Hermandi and they mobilized. So that's why they're getting troops there. Uh... Excuse me, not the Hermandi. The Hermandi failed. The Herman, the Hermanduri failed. But this force was going to start moving next to 
the Swabia, the Suwa, the Swabi, and they did mobilize. So he moved there. And here's what I start doing, learning for the barbarians. For example, remember when I was fighting in goal, I was spreading them all out like this because I didn't want them to die in supply. You have to lose half the army in supply. Movement, you take off one guy. But in supply, you're going to lose half your army. So here's what I did now. Look, this is Arminius. You see what I'm doing here? The B class units suck and they're just levy units and so i put 20 of them here and then the rest i put 3 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 i put 19 good troops that i really want to fight so if i move out the barbarians and they have to take a hit on supply and lose half the force i just take off the two levy and I keep really the force I want. But I'm going to move them into position. You don't have time to mess around with the barbarians. And you go for a battle. And then you run away. That's how I'm playing the barbarians now. I'm putting the levy units there. Some of these, like this stack, it'll have one levy and then ten units. When they have to use, lose half to supply, I just take off the levy unit. So I think that's a good plan of how I'm working the barbarians right now. And we'll see how that works.
Now there is something else I want to cover. In the rule book at 34.11, some of these cities that have been Roman for the last 50 years, you know, in history, they turn to major cities and, and into Roman cities. So the colony sites actually turn into a Roman city. And what we do is we look right here. Tribal centers cease to exist after 1 AD in Gaul and Spain. So these tribal centers are no longer... Uh, Romans have to worry about you can move next to them. There's no mobilization or recruiting going on any longer We will also use the tribal centers in Illyria after 20 in Britain after 70 colonies um, All colonies within the Rhinus and Danube boundaries of the Empire are treated as full Roman cities after 1 AD now for that to happen You have to own the colony, okay? So they're saying all colonies under, within the Danube and Gallia board all become Roman cities. So we, for example, this has been colonized. That is now a full Roman city. But see, this one has not been colonized. So it would not, you would not turn that into a Rome, Roman city. As soon as you colonize it, it will become a full Roman city. And then we're going to have to get markers because I don't have enough of these city markers that I'm putting on these that I explained earlier to show you what, you know, that colonies are now full Roman cities. So, yeah, that took a lot of them. That's all I got left. But any colony site here that I had already colonized, I put this marker on them. It is a full Roman city. And that's going to be helpful for the Romans advancing here. At first, I was recruiting from back here. But now I can recruit right on the line because this colony sites have become cities. So, very helpful. Okay, so I'm just stopping to show you. This was seven years. And, you know, I go slow because I like to simulate these tribes so they don't come up behind me. So I'm moving slow. We went for a few battles, nothing major still. And I'm converting as I go. I lose tribes. Uh, they had a big mobilization, which, because they lose people to supply and stuff, but they had a big mobilization. They And I chose to mobilize up in Britain. It was, I think, event number 54. And so I'm choosing to hold on to London right there. And this is a city right here I'm going to take, and then I'm probably going to get London. I, I own the two cities down here, but he's starting to occupy, well, he's coming around on me there, the colony sites and these cities, he's going to occupy them. You know, 
make me take a little time to do tribute but Britain shouldn't take that much longer and again I'm moving slow because I'm colonizing as I go instead of just uh, going after the army but I shouldn't probably be going that slow but I'll show you some more remember I'm not going to take the full in my line uh, my calendar remember I've gave myself 22 turns and so I went two, three, four, five, six. Then this calendar gets changed. Uh, we skip to nine, and in nine A.D., of course, I had to remove Varus. Remember, he got—he's the one that got ambushed. So I take him off, and then that's where I'm at right there. So you can see I start skipping stuff. Other leaders will be removed and added. Remember, Octavian gets removed right here. Octavian's no longer emperor. Tiberius is. And so what I do is Octavian's sitting in uh, Rome. He's just helping collect, make sure I collect every stratagem I can get. Every turn I'm full packed with stratagems. And I put the Imperator on him to show that he's Emperor. And I'll just transfer it to Tiberius when we're done. Or when Tiberius becomes Emperor. So that's it. We're going to keep moving along. From last I left off, I went up to, we were at 9 AD, I went up to 15 AD, and it was a total of um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 turns total. Now, Purple's been going along here. He's converted one. That's a camp he built, two, camp, camp. Three, four, and he's on that one. Five colony sites. Now, you know, colony sites, it takes about five to six turns to get it, and that's if you roll the one, two, or three. If you don't get the one, two, or three, then it takes longer. So that's pretty good. Uh, we've been capturing the Arabian cities here. Up here, we've been fighting. I decided as a Roman, a tactic is is at some point in the game, it might be around 70 AD, these stopped to be uh, tribal centers, just like what happened in Gallia and Spain. So I'm not going to worry about assimilating that. I'm just going and I'm trying to defeat the Germans. Now, they always they get to mobilize. Arminius is a supreme leader. I didn't say that before. I just realized it a few years ago in the game. He is a supreme leader when he starts. So he does get stratagems and they recruit off their tribalization, tribalization, uh, tribalization centers. And you know, one political point recruits how big the tribal mobilization is. So for example, the Germans own these three tribes and he will recruit two at a time, two at a time, three at a time off of these. Now the Romans have the Hurmati on their side. And then up there, all those tribes with the red Japanese up here, that's these here, and the German tribes that are on the Gallia board still, those all belong to the Barbarian player. There's one tribe that belongs to the Roman there. And then this sheet is one they added after the fact for these tribes. And both of those tribes, which were right here where purple is, belong to the Barbarian player. So they are, like that's a barbarian. I'm letting them come in. I mean, he can try to attack these civises. You know, my thing is he's probably going to die trying to march or supply before anything else. So I'm not too worried about them. As long as I have a refuge city that I can go to in the winter, which right here, right there, I colonize that. Therefore, that is a Roman city for all intents and purposes. You know that. And I'm going to, matter of fact, let's just keep a legion in there. I'm going to hold on to that. And when winter hits, I'm going to march. You know, it'll take me maybe one turn, two turns to get back there. I'm going to have to be very careful. I'm going to try to colonize this and keep going here. Armenius and Germanicus had fought twice. And one was a draw. And one, Germanicus won a major victory. So, that's the way that's going. Uh, you know, in 14 AD, Octavian died. 
No more Octavian, and Tiberius became emperor. Tiberius was fighting in Britain. You remove him, you put him on Rome, which is what we did. Now, up in Britain, we succeeded in taking all the uh, Britain cities. So they're all under our control, but you can still see there's Britain tribes around. This is a uh, Roman tribe. So, but I do, I did convert this city right here. So with that conversion, I can always rest there and I'll try to convert these before I hit winter again because I'm way up here. I'm going to bring him up and convert one probably on this road so I can always come back. But at 15 AD, it's another, you know, um, important stop. You have to remove Roman leaders, Germanicus, Vala, and Silius. So the main leaders, these three leaders are done fighting for the Romans. And I also have it that you have to remove the three leaders that started with Germany. So those three are done. Now there are other leaders that the Germans can add. And there's one I already put on the board. At 14 AD... You were allowed to now start recruiting them. Now, that's an exception to the rule because, like I said, these leaders just come in on certain scenarios they have. And um, in our game, just at 14 AD, you can add them to the Germans. And they're going to stay there for a while because there's always going to be some type of leader. They're not real crazy leaders, right? This guy is a veteran one. He's a veteran one. But these two are barbarians. So... The veterans will be removed soon. We'll only let the veterans stay. But you're always going to have some type of named leader. And if that named leader can win a major battle, he can become a supreme chief. Otherwise, once Arminius is removed, there is no more supreme chief for the Germans. So it's going to be harder for the Germans now and easier for the Romans since they're going to have a hard time getting uh, military stratagems. But that's it. And we're going to continue through the years. Just wanted to show you what's up. And we're going to head on to 70 AD when we have to set that up. So, as we go through the calendar and the years, given time to fight up here, I didn't go through all the years from 1 AD to 69, but I went through a few of them, a lot of them. We're, the Parthians are back at war with the Romans. I was getting ready for a battle here. But... As you're fighting and going through this stuff, when we get to 69 AD, we're going to check out the year of the four emperors. 